Hello, hello, and welcome to another video of Learn Redstone with me. I'm your host, Blends. Let's get started. All right, today we're going to build your first five redstone builds. We're going to show you how to build these and explain how they work. And uh, yeah, these are definitely the first five that you should build in, in any world. These are pretty simple to do, and they're super useful for your uh, starter base. So we're going to build this one right here, which is a semi-automatic uh, farm. This one, I have carrots in it. You can also do potatoes, wheat, beetroots. Uh, you can either do it with nether wart if you'd like to, instead of using dirt, you use soul sand. Um, this one is really simple. It's, it's really, it's just, this is the redstone. It's just a line, and then this one to extend the line, and then you've got the water and the trapdoors down here. And then you hit the button down here. I'll show you how it works real quick. You hit the button, the water comes down, knocks down all your crops. All of your crops end up right over here. Some of them might end up on the top there. Some of them might end up right over there, but you can go get those real easy. But these carrots eventually will make their way in here, which we've got a torch in there too. But yeah, they're eventually going to make their way in there. And then all you got to do to get uh, to fill it back up is just climb up here, come on over this way. Once you come in here, you pick up any of the extra carrots that left over here. And I put this here so you don't accidentally fall down there and then have to jump and like ruin some of your farmland to get back up. Same thing with this. This makes it so you can walk up without ruining your farmland. But yeah, you just come down here and just replant everything. It is super easy to build. So let's show you that one real quick. Oh my god, there's a bat farm in there. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't light this up, so yeah, there's bats everywhere. I was wondering what those noise were. Let's get rid of these guys real quick. All right, before we get to building this one, you need to know how water works and how far it runs and all that kind of stuff. So when you put in water, it runs for eight blocks and then it just stops. So right there is block number eight. We'll count it out real quick. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, in order for it to drop down, what you have to do is just break that one down and then it's going to start at that block there it falls and do eight more it's going to come right out to here so if i were to drop that one down it's going to stay there if i drop that one down it's going to go out uh, about eight more right there perfect and you also need to know how farmland works so when it's water is right here it goes out four blocks from each direction just like this and then like this and then you can also just go four blocks from there because it's one two three four blocks in the corner as well okay now that we know how water and farmland works we can see that the water that starts right here is going to go eight down here and then or seven and it's going to drop down this way and go down here eight more and that's going to supply uh this half because it's one two three four blocks away with the uh, proper moisture for the farm and then this is the exact same way over here so you just start right there, right where the farm starts, and then you can just go straight down like that. We also know that water, when it runs seven or less blocks, it'll go down one more level and then start over and go down until it hits the eighth block. Now, I don't know why. I just have one row of carrots there. I started to fill it back up, and then I stopped. But so when the water drops here, it's going to start on that uh, that polished andesite right there, and that's going to be one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. So this right here is as far as out as you can go. Now it starts right there. If you really want to, you can make this so you can crouch down there and, and place all of your, your uh, farms and get all of your carrots and stuff because carrots are actually going to, if they are uh, planted here, they're actually going to sometimes get sucked up into the water and kind of land up here. To keep that from happening, you just um, leave that one not as farm. But you can put it as farm as you want to. It just makes it not quite as efficient because you don't quite get all your stuff back. So this is going to be eight across this way with the water running down like that. And then I put these here so you don't trample, like I said earlier. And then this layer is just eight more blocks all the way to right here. And I just put these in so you don't fall down there, like I said earlier. Now, how this redstone works is pretty simple. When you press this button, all it does is activate this redstone line. Because this button right here will activate this redstone dust on top of it. And that will take it uh, 15 blocks. Because remember, the redstone dust has a signal of 15. So this one right here is number 15. Or it's actually st signal strength number 1. So if this repeater wasn't here, it would be zero, but this repeater actually starts the cycle over and this becomes 15 and then 14, 13, 12, 11, all the way down to, I think, two or three right here I counted earlier. But this block right here, I will take the water out real quick and show you how this all works. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to build it right over here real quick. Okay, so this is the back of the farm and all you do is you put your trap doors like this and then we're just going to make it that long for now. And then you're going to build another layer in front of it we're just going to use glass it doesn't need to be glass but it's helpful just so you can see what's going on but then when you put the water in here see now it's just going to be right there let me get the water back out and then when you put the water in here it's uh the um
And when they added waterlogged blocks in, when you put water in right here, it's actually going to stay like this. Uh, before, I think it was 1.14 they added that. That wouldn't work out. It would just, it, you just can't place water there or something like that. I forget exactly how it worked before that, but yeah, this is definitely a 1.14 and plus farm here. But yeah, when you put all the water in there and then you activate the redstone dust, I'll show you what the trap doors do. We're just going to emulate it right here just by putting a button. So when you press the button, as soon, as long as that button is down, it's going to power that line and then those trap doors are going to go up and that's going to release all the water out. So that's how the water just comes down like this. You used to have to do this with either pistons holding water up and then you would hit the button to unpower the piston so it, the piston so it would let the water out. Or you would use dispensers which got expensive because it requires a bunch of stone and, and uh, like bows and all that kind of stuff. Bow and arrows. Not arrows, just bows. But yeah, this is a much cheaper way to do it. And I just put this trapdoor here to block the water from coming this way because when uh, trapdoors are down, obviously like they are right here, it blocks the water from going into that block. So yeah, that's all the redstone for this one. I do have a tutorial on how to make this. Um, I will put a link in the description here. But yeah, that's that's a pretty simple build. So let's go on to the next one. Okay, next we got this auto smelter. Now what you do is on the, the hopper on the side leading into the furnace, and you can also use a blast furnace or a smoker for this, depending on what kind of items you want to burn in there. Uh, regular furnaces burn everything. Smokers burn food, and it goes twice as fast as a regular furnace. And then blast furnaces uh, smelt ore and go twice as fast as a regular furnace. So depending on which you're going to put in this, it, you can uh, have different uh, different furnace types, and then it's going to go a little faster for you. But any hopper that leads into the sides, or oh yeah, any any of the hopper that leads into the sides is going to be where you put your fuel, and any hopper that goes on top is where you're going to put the stuff that you want to actually uh, cook. Like, right, I got raw chicken going in there. And then on the bottom here, this is where the cooked stuff actually comes out because the hopper underneath, uh, whenever the item is done cooking in there, it's going to suck it out, put it into that chest there. Now, why do I have these levers on here, you ask? So these levers actually stop it. So when this cooks, it's actually going to stay right here. This is super helpful for if you want, like, an XP bank because every time you take stuff out of a furnace like this, if you just take it straight out, you actually get the experience from it. Now... Furnaces actually remember how many items were in there before you took something out. So if this is continuously cooking and continuously full of stuff, then it's going to remember, let's say you fill up this entire chest down here, and then you take an item out of this furnace, you're going to get quite a bit of experience out of that. So this is a really easy um, and very useful way to get experience at the beginning of the game. So yeah, I've got, I've cooked 22 already, plus four more in each one of these. So... What's that going to be? 22. That's going to be 32 because they both just went to 5 right now. So for 32 items, you're going to get a little bit of experience. Actually, let me switch over to um, survival, or yeah, survival mode so you can actually see how much experience I got. So right now I have 2 experience for whatever reason on this world and no, like, uh, no experience on my bar yet. So this is turned off. I'm going to go ahead and just take these 7 out. And there you go. I went halfway up to 3. I'm going to take these out of here. And now I'm a little bit over 3. But if you turn these back on, it's just going to keep dropping them down in here. So eventually, this is going to fill up, and then you just come by and turn it off. And then, whoops, and you just take one out of it, and you're going to get the experience from all of the stuff that uh, was smelted in there. Okay, next we've got this micro sugarcane farm. Now, this is a pretty simple setup. Now, you do need a little bit of iron for this because you need a hopper minecart and a hopper to make this actually the smallest possible version you can. So, uh, see, it takes five, one, two, yeah, five, ten... 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, it takes 15 iron to make this. So it's really not too bad. You can easily get 15 iron in your, in your first few minutes playing the game. And you do need for the observer some quartz, so you do need to go to the nether. But yeah, all of this is, is fairly cheap to make, just one of these, and it is super helpful. Because I've let this run, I actually have it, I have the tick speed turned up times 10, so this is actually growing 10 times faster than normal. But if you're just doing it like normal, this is going to fill up... And if you're making your base, you're going to get a lot of stuff around there. But how this one works is this piston right here, this observer right here is facing this way. So when the sugar cane grows up in front of that, the uh, observer is going to realize that so that block changed a little bit. It's going to power this redstone signal right here, which is powering this block, which is powering this piston. And let's wait and watch it happen here. There you go. When that piston powers, it's just a one tick power and it goes out and it pops all the stuff off and it drops down. Now this hopper minecart can actually pick items up off of a uh, full block. So when it lands on this full block, it actually just picks it up and drops it down into this chest here. So let me show you how to build this one real quick. This one's really easy. 
Okay, you just come out here, you grab your chest. You're going to put your hopper into that one. And you actually need some rails too, which I forgot to grab. Let me grab those real quick. So you need a little bit more iron. And the piston also takes a little bit of iron too. So I think that'll bring it up to uh, 21 iron if I did the math in my head real quick correctly. So then you put your rail down on top of there. And then you put a mine cart on top of there. And then you can go ahead and break that rail. I don't know if I even broke it. You don't have to. I didn't break it on that one. But if you do break it, then this one doesn't really move quite as easy. And then what you need to do is you're going to put uh, your block right on top of it right there. You can get rid of those if you want to. Um, this one you actually got to keep because this is where your water is going to go. And I'm just going to go ahead and use glass because it's easier to see in there. We're just going to go around. And like on this one over here, you actually don't need these corner ones. Um, it does help because sometimes the piston will glitch the sugar cane through the glass. And uh, kind of sometimes it'll pop up top here. Sometimes it'll go off into the corner. If you surround it all the way, usually it won't pop through there, but it does happen sometimes. But you can go ahead and put your water right there. On top of that water, you're going to put any solid block, and then on top of that one, you're going to put your piston. And then back here, you actually need to get a solid block, not a glass block, because it's not going to work with glass. So you put that there. You're going to put a redstone dust here, and then you grab your observer, come around the back, and put it there so the redstone is coming out this backside. And then all you do is surround this with water and put some sugar cane, or surround this with whatever block you want and put sugarcane in there. Now sugarcane does, I believe, grow quicker with the light. So it's a good idea to put maybe some glowstone in there as well. Personally, I think it looks good if you put the glowstone right on top there. That way it lights everything up for you. If you choose to see in there. Okay, next is the cow, pig, and sheep farm. You know, you might have noticed that this was a little bit lower in the intro here because I made it a little bit wrong. If I put it too short, I actually started to suffocate them all. So I hadn't tested it out before I actually did this. So I fixed that real quick. And uh, yeah, this one is super easy to make. Now what this does is when you have a bunch of, actually I need to get some wheat real quick. There we go. So when you have a bunch of cows, and obviously you can breed them with wheat, but when they're all in a little pin like this, you can't really click on them very good. I'm trying to click right now and it's not really getting any. But you hit this and water comes out, and now all of a sudden you can get a whole bunch of them. You can just walk around, you can basically breed all of them. Now this thing actually uses entity cramming to kill all of your cows that, that spawn in there. Now, if you didn't know this, you can only have 24 entities in one block before it starts to kill something else that pops in there. Now, it, I just started this right now, and I've got four beef and two leather, leather out of this, so this is super useful to do. Now, how this works is, is really simple. Let me go ahead and show you how to build it. Okay, you just start where you're going to build it. You put down a chest, you go behind it, you crouch and put in your hopper so it's facing into that chest there. And then around that, I'm just going to use glass so you can see it a little easier going to put a, a little base around it and that's fine that that one was a little too high we're going to go one up like that okay now above the chest here you can either use glass so you can open it if you put like a regular um let's see polished anastite instead of glass it's actually you're not going to be able to open that you can if you choose put upside down stairs above that that way you'll be able to open it and then make it match whatever other palette you want to do but for today we're just going to do it in glass and then any, anywhere on one of these you're going to put your dispenser. That has to be a dispenser, not a dropper, because if you remember, the dispenser actually will dispense the water. A dropper will just spit the water bucket out. So you put a dispenser there, and then you go around, and then you fill in the rest of it here. And then do one more on top of that, and go ahead and put your water bucket in the dispenser there. Okay, after you got your water bucket on there, go ahead and put your another block on top of there and a button on top of that. And then you're going to press the button just to test it, make sure water comes out. Press again, water should turn off. Now what you need to do is get a bunch of cows. So go ahead and grab your wheat or your leads or whatever and go ahead and bring them over and then get them in there. I know they're a pain in the butt, but you kind of got to you gotta push them in there sometimes. Once you get your cows in there, you just put your fence on top of it. You can keep that one. You can get rid of it. It doesn't matter. But this actually keeps them from bobbing up too high and being able to jump out occasionally. That's it. All you got to do is start feeding them. All you need to start with is just two cows in there. It does take a while to breed up to get up to 24 so they can start to entity cram once you get any more in there. But yeah, you only need two cows to start with. Then when you're done with that, you can get the food that you did uh, that you use in this farm. You can put all of your beef in here and then it's going to cook it up all automatically for you. You can use your leather with all of the sugar cane you get with this one to make books so you can make yourself an enchantment room. All right, next we're going to have a garbage disposal system. Now. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get a lot of stuff that I just don't want. Like, I don't need these leather. Now, we're using a trap chest on this, so when I let go, the trap chest actually stays. Or the stuff actually stays in the chest, but when I close it, it starts to spit out 
and actually throw all this stuff into a cactus. You don't need a cactus, you can throw it into lava, but just make sure if you use lava, you don't burn everything down. You need to make sure you use uh, blocks that don't light on fire, or if you do light them on fire, you know, the, if they can light on fire, make sure you turn uh, fire red off on your world, otherwise you're gonna burn everything down and that would not be fun. So this one's a little bit more complicated, but it's actually really simple still. Let's show you how to build it. Okay, with this one, you're gonna start with a dropper. So your dropper is going to be facing this way and it's going to spit it out this way. Make sure it's a dropper, not a dispenser. Now, if you're going to do it with lava, you can just break that out and put lava in there and then put your blocks around this way so items only are going to land in the lava there. Actually, let's just go ahead and do it that way. If you do choose to use cactus, um, you cannot have a block next to cactus, otherwise the cactus will break, which is what actually breaks everything there. Um, cactus has to go on sand, just remember that. And then, yeah, put something on top. Otherwise, this thing is going to start growing and then it's going to get in your way. And it's just going to, it's going to, it's annoying. Don't do that. <laughs> put something on top of it. All right, let's keep building it here. So once this is built, you're going to use the redstone comparator. Now, if you remember, the redstone uh, comparator can sense if there is a signal behind it. And if there is, it's going to put out the same signal strength in front of it. Now, when there is one item in this, uh, dropper it's actually a one signal strength so that's just one it doesn't go any further than that which is why you need a repeater you put your repeater right here you put your another redstone dust here to continue that one and it starts out actually at 15 power and just over here and you're going to power your dropper so every time an item goes into this dropper your comparator is going to see that there's a there's something in there it's going to give it a little bit of power and it's going to drop it out this way pretty simple right now in order for it to actually can repeat like it does you're going to make it so only one item goes in there at a time. And to do that, you use a hopper directly into that, and then you just put your chest on top of it. I'm going to use a trap chest, like I said, so if you accidentally put something, oops, I don't want that in there, you can take it out before you lose it all. Oh, there you go. You shut it, and then it starts to work. Now, one thing to be careful of is before you get it all set up, don't put stuff in there, because if it has, let's say, more than one item in here, it still shows that it has a single strength, so it's actually... It's not going to keep repeating itself. It has to have only one in at a time. That's why it's important to use a chest and a hopper to put everything in there. All right, hopefully that was helpful, and I explained a little bit how this stuff works here. Like all these, are these are all pretty simple little farms, but yeah, they're super easy to have, or super helpful to have on a beginner farm. And then when you're doing this, just make sure everything is lit up. I forgot to mention that earlier, which is why I have these here. Um, I did it so you can actually light up the stuff underneath it a lot easier too. Anyway, I hope you learned a little bit, and are now a tiny bit more comfortable using this redstone stuff here. None of these are very complicated things. Like I said, the most complicated one is probably going to be this one here because the comparator signal and has to, has to, you know, do all that stuff there. But yeah, that's all the time I got for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and feel free to leave a comment. See you later.